Hello and welcome to my first web seminar on anti-money laundering and anti-terrorist financing. My name is Arathi Rawal and I am an ACAMS certified analyst who has experience working in the compliance field for over two and a half years. Your visit to this site proves that you are interested in learning about world's biggest problems, that is money laundering and terrorist financing. This session is covering basic understanding of these global crimes and methods to combat them. Criminal-minded people driven by greed for easy money get involved in crimes like drug trafficking, smuggling, tax evasions, etc. As a result of which, they earn large amount of illegal money that needs to be cleaned before it can be enjoyed without fear. So to define money laundering, it is a process of converting dirty money that is earned with criminal activities into clean money. Sometimes though, it is not for the purpose of greed, but money is also laundered to support terrorist groups to buy weapons of mass destruction. This is terrorist financing. For this episode, I would like to provide you with basic awareness of these two crimes. The term money laundering is said to have originated with Italian mafia Al Capone, who apparently purchased laundromats to commingle his illegal profits from prostitution and bootlegged liquor sales with legitimate business sales from the laundromats to obscure his illegal profits. The pictures above show the laundered money and the source of laundered money. Every day there are numerous incidents of money laundering that makes news headlines. Many financial institutions as well as non-financial sectors facilitate the process of money laundering directly or indirectly. To give some examples, in March 2010, Recovia Bank revealed it had laundered about $378.4 billion for the Sinola cartel through a network of exchange houses. Also to quote, the RCMP of Canada expressed their concern about organized crime that may have been laundering illicit money through some casinos in Canada. In the last few months, large cash for chips transactions totaling to $8 million have been reported. These incidents keep on happening due to the failure to apply the kind of proper control and adequate client identification program. Money laundering has potentially devastating economic, security, and social consequences. Countries that have liberal money laundering laws provide encouragement to drug dealers, terrorists, illegal armed dealers, corrupt public officials to operate and expand their criminal enterprises. It brings bad reputation to the country, unsafe living place for the residents, unstable and highly imbalanced economy where more power is in the hands of criminals. Money laundering affects everyone. Some people claim it's a victimless crime. It is not. It results in increased taxes for those who do not evade tax. It results in increased insurance policy premiums for those who do not make fraudulent claims. It results in higher taxes for those who do not make fraudulent claims for the benefits. It even results in higher costs to businesses, which means a combination of less profits and higher prices to the consumers. In short, money laundering has far-reaching consequences. Terrorist financing goes hand-in-hand -hand with money laundering. In general, money is laundered for one's own profit whereas terrorist financing refers to the processing of funds to sponsor or support terrorist activities. Unlike money laundering, the terrorist financing may involve funds raised from legitimate sources, such as personal donations and profit from businesses and charitable organizations, as well as from criminal sources such as drug trade, smuggling of weapons and other goods, fraud, kidnapping and extortion. A terrorist group, like any other criminal organization, builds and maintains an infrastructure to facilitate the development of sources of funding, to channel those funds to the providers of materials and services to the organization. As you can see in the above pictures, the terrorist network led by Osama bin Laden had struck deals in blood diamonds worth about 
$20 million in the months before the attack of 9-11. Terrorist activities take money and one way to combat terrorists is to cut off their access to the funds. For identifying the terrorist activities or an attempt to support terrorism, one must know the customer really well before entering into business deals and monitor the customer's activities based on the risk. Terrorism is fundamentally a violent revolutionary act that is conducted with certain goals, mainly political. The devastating impact of terrorism remains years long. People are terrified. Economy goes back in years. Think about a developing country who had allocated funds for development will now be required to use it for disaster recovery. Imagine if you have a tourism-based economy. Who would risk to visit your country after a terrorist attack? From normal life to international trade, everything gets shattered with a terrorist attack. Terrorists need money for their organized crime. This may come from donation from non-profit making organizations who has hidden activity of supporting terrorist funding, can be facilitated by wires from offshore tax havens. What we can do to prevent terrorism? We need to identify risk in our business should be more alarmed when dealing with certain types of customers or entities and report to the regulators if we come across something that does not seem usual. Now that we have the idea what money laundering and terrorist financing is, let us talk about this individually in a bit more detail. To define anti-money laundering, it is a term mainly used to describe the legal controls that require financial institutions and other regulated entities to prevent and report money laundering activities. In all major jurisdictions around the world, criminal legislation and regulation make it mandatory for banks and financial institutions to have arrangements to combat money laundering with harsh criminal penalties for non-compliance. In order to be punished under AML laws, it is generally required that the individual knows or believes that the proceeds of crime in the form of money or assets were derived from the commission of another offense known as predicate offense. These predicate offenses are generally motivated by profit. Crimes like bribery, forgery, murder, smuggling, drug trafficking are all examples of predicate offenses. One of the most tried, tested, and successful methods of investigating crime is to follow the money. So criminals want to move the money further and faster than investigators can follow it. They use structuring, smurfing, and wires to and from offshore jurisdictions. From time to time, they use unrelated third parties to create distance from the original criminal. Mostly, they use unsusceptible individuals who has no relation to the criminal and are mere dummies to the hand of the launderer. Let us now look at the methods commonly used for money laundering. There is no single identifiable method of laundering money. Methods can range from the purchase and resale of a luxury item like a house, car, jewelry, to passing money through a complex international web of legitimate businesses and shell companies. Proceeds from the illegal activities are converted into a form which can be more easily be transferred, concealed or transported. The methods of money laundering have become increasingly sophisticated with newer technologies in the market. Despite the variety of methods employed, the laundering is not a single act, but a process accomplished of three basic stages which may comprise of numerous transactions by the launderer. First stage is placement, where the ill-gotten money makes entrance into the financial economic system in the form of either a bank account or prepaid credit cards or gift cards, in short, anything that has monetary value that can be easily transformed and transported. The placement stage is the most dangerous for launderer and comparatively easier to trace by the financial institutions or other non-financial institutions as it involves actual physical movement of illicit cash proceeds. It is a step more closely located to the actual crime. In the case of a drug trafficking, sometimes it's cash 
is often found with the narcotics residue in sufficient amounts to tip off drug sniffing dogs. I'm sure you must have heard about the story that recently made to New York Times on how a New York bank manager busted a laundering money case. The money smelled like weed. As such, anti-money laundering law enforcement efforts focus on the placement stage. Layering is the second stage where illicit proceeds are further moved from the sources by creating complex layers of financial transactions. Launderers at this stage move funds around the financial system through a series of transactions. Create confusion and complicate the audit trail by making numerous transactions. These transactions may reasonably appear to have a legitimate purpose or may appear to have no reasonable lawful purpose. Examples of layering activities are exchanging monetary instruments for larger or smaller amounts, transferring funds between different institutions, sometimes between different countries, extensive stock trades, wires between different accounts and account holders. The goal of this stage is to move the illicit money into a seemingly legitimate form. Illegal funds after moving through various layers now appear to be clean and derived from a legitimate lawful source. At this stage, the funds are so thoroughly integrated with legitimate monies that they are impossible to be isolated and identified. To further shield the criminal from a recorded connection to the funds by providing a plausible explanation for the source of the funds, investments are made in real estate buy sales, repayment of false loans, or purchase of luxury items. Even though terrorist organizations vary in size and objective, large state-like organizations to small, decentralized and self-directed networks, financing is required not just to fund specific terrorist operations, but to meet the broader organizational cost of developing and maintaining a terrorist organization and to create an enabling environment necessary to sustain their activities. Terrorists have shown adaptability and opportunism in meeting their funding requirements. Terrorist organizations raise funding from legitimate sources, including the abuse of charitable entities or legitimate businesses or self-financing by terrorists themselves. Terrorists also derive funding from a variety of criminal activities ranging in scale and sophistication from low-level crime to organized fraud or narcotic smuggling or hawalas. Chechen organized crime groups and terrorist organizations in Russia were benefiting from counterfeit good manufacturing and trafficking in 2000. According to the police officials, this counterfeit CD plant was a source of financing for Chechen separatists. The CD plant was run by Chechen organized crime which then remitted funds to Chechen rebels. The Russian Federal Security Services estimated that the average monthly earnings of the criminal organization were estimated to have been between US $500,000 to $700,000. In short, terrorist activities require money, and one way to combat terrorists is to cut off their excess of funds. In October of 2001, to fight terrorism globally, the Financial Action Task Force expanded its mandate beyond anti-money laundering to include countering the financing of terrorism and issued a set of special recommendations on terrorist financing to complement existing standards aimed at countering the laundering of proceeds of crime.